Welcome to Darian Donju Art. Um, in this video, this will be my first real-time video. Uh, I guess this would be considered more of a tutorial than a speed speed paint. And as I said, I'm an, on an art journey myself. That's part of what this channel is about. It's kind of sharing with you along the way. So as opposed to me being like an already professional artist who's you know, um, you know, kind of going back and showing you how to do certain things. I'm more so actually sharing with you as I'm learning. So one of the things that, that's always important is, you know, uh, eyes are the windows to the soul. So um, I'm going to show you what I've learned so far on how to do eyes. And I'm definitely, you know, would like to encourage you to leave a comment um, if you like my approach. Uh, or if you you know have better suggestions for me to improve that, but hopefully this could help um, some people. So you'll notice the way my Photoshop is set up right now. I, I kind of have these sketch templates, uh, which I use to um, not have to create all the layers uh, when I go in. And also one thing about my brush, I'm using uh, the Ultimate Steve On brush, which I got from Gum Road, a friend of mine. Uh, sent me a recommendation for that brush for the sketching part of it. So yeah, this video is going to focus on that sketching. So what I do is I have the figure layer, and on that figure layer is where I just I use that for my like my my helper lines, right? So for drawing an eye, at least this is what I've I've gleaned from the tutorials I've followed and and books I've seen. Um, so we start by drawing a circle. And the way you draw that circle, like in my case, it's not going to be perfect. Um, but definitely drawing circles is one of the things that you should just be practicing uh, for hand-eye coordination. Um, so, and it doesn't matter if this circle is perfect because, right, once again, it's just for uh, your reference and it's going to be on the layer below. So one of the nice things about this is, you know, many of the drawing tutorials talk about drawing the eye, but they're doing it on traditional um, you know on a piece of paper so a lot of times they use these guidelines and they have to erase them but in in our case because we're in Photoshop and I'm, I'm just you know I'm using it the way I'm going about which is using modern methods methods so I'm just digitally painting right so I'm not dealing with traditional uh, in most of this, the work that I'm doing so once I've got kind of my circle and everything um, and it doesn't have to be exact again um, there's a you, you draw a line through through the circle it doesn't have to be exactly through the middle but it could be depending on the type of eye it might be straight through the middle it might be slanted up you know or you know or it might be a little bit down i i tend to like the ones that go a little bit down especially like you know a lot of my drawings i'm, I'm trying to draw attractive women right in my drawings it's just an aesthetic that i like and uh, makes it more fun for me to draw but so I like the slanted down look. So the idea is you draw this line as a guideline through the, through kind of sort of through the middle. It doesn't have to be exact. Now, now that I have my initial guides to get this started, I'll move to my sketch layer. And then I'm going to start and I'm going to get a little corner of this eye kind of, kind of sketched in there. Right? And also you'll notice that I'm on multiply. I actually could take this. I'll go leave it there. So that's on 100%, it's on multiply. And you see this little curvature of this eye is gonna kinda come out here, right? So that's the curvature of the eye where it's the, the in, the, like at the teardrop area that, where it's the tears form. Um, that's where, that, that has that little curvature. So then what you do is we're gonna draw the top eyelid. And once again, this varies in shape. Uh, it's not gonna be a perfect curve usually. But it just it ends up crossing that line, outer line of the of the circle that you drew, which is the eyeball, right? So that that is the actual eyeball, which is behind the lids. So you just keep in mind that that's there. And I know that I should probably be be, be being more loose and sketching faster. But as I get better, I'll I will do that. But I'm just. Uh, not that loose yet, but I have to work on that. So that's just one of the, one of the things that I'm supposed to work on. So the, the bottom eyelid comes across and then meets up there, right at that same far corner. And you know, it has that little curvature in, bring it across and bring it up. And once again, this is a style thing. So it's gonna vary per 
per person but there you've got your two eyelids in um then there's the kind of the crease of the upper eyelid and once again, this is going to be a style thing as to like how how deep or how wide you make that. Um, but that's going to curve across and that can that can go all the way across to that line that you made. Right. That line that crosses it. And you just make that there. Once again, it doesn't have to be perfect um, because, you know, there is going to be variation. These are just guidelines to, 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 to get you started in the right direction so you can feel confident about, you know, that you're kind of getting the parts in where they're supposed generally where they're supposed to be but like I said if they're not perfect that's just fine okay so there's an upper eyelid um, then there's a little tiny curvature and actually what we can do at this point is we can actually start to to take the figure part of it down because we don't need it as much anymore right I'll just take the percentage of it down so I'm not seeing it or focusing on it too much and then back on the sketch layer we'll draw this little curvature of the eye right about there where the circle is right so that's that little teardrop area that's in there okay so all right so that gives me that and then what you can do is is kind of create um a little extra line for the projection of the lid right and so this is the idea that the skin is actually thick you know, it's not, it's, your eye is not like saran wrap, right? It's not this thin layer. So the fact that it's opening up and breaking into the skin, you have to recognize that there is, that there is a thickness to it. So, and then when we go to the render part of this thing, that'll be the part that renders a little bit more pink, kind of has a little bit more pinkish because it's, it's, it's almost like, it's almost as if you, you took an exacto knife and had cut the skin and made a little incision right to open up this eye think of it that way um and that's how you can think of this part it's going to have a little little ledge as you call it so this is the ledge of the eye so i've probably overworked some of this but once again it's a sketch and because we know we're going to be doing this sketch for for digital painting the lines don't have to be perfect because you're going to end up painting over these anyway they're just going to be guides for you. Now, if I were rendering this as something like maybe for a comic book or, you know, something where the lines need to be more exact, I would spend more time to get the detail right. Here, you can add a few little, like, kind of, kind of wrinkle lines, like to show the angle that that would come down. And then here, it's okay to have a few wrinkle lines, right? So you, you get the idea, you know, just to give like let's say you weren't the one coloring this and you needed to give the colorist an idea where where the wrinkles are kind of happening you know uh for the render phase then you could kind of you could kind of do that right so that gives you that idea and then for the for the iris um what we can do is actually let's go to sketch two layer for that and in fact, what I'll do is I'll put sketch two layer underneath. Um, and that's just one of the advantages of Photoshop, which is that we do have, so there's a guideline for that. And it's that, let's go back to our figure layer. So from this point here, the iris is two fourths or one half of the, the distance here. So as we, as we draw this, let's say we were to split that in half and it just can be estimated, right? It doesn't have to be exact, but it's just guidelines. So that's probably halfway right about there, right? So your iris ball is gonna be, is gonna be halfway and then actually I should probably do it more like this, right? So there, you know, so just keep it vertical. So there you go. So those guides are gonna give me the idea that the iris is halfway and then I'm gonna go to the layer underneath and that's where I'm going to draw the actual ball of the iris. And, you know, you got some discretion here. I like to, to have it not touch the bottom and then make it a perfect circle. And because you're drawing on layers, you don't have to worry about the fact that you're going over other lines or anything like that. And just, you know, try to get it pretty good as a circle. In the render phase, I would probably go and take um, 
like a you know one of these magic selection tools here and actually use a perfect circle to, to paint over it but in general I just want to get the idea that it's a pretty good circle and then now because it's on its other layer I can just erase that and I get the circle to be the way it needs to be and then get back to my brush with um, the B So there we go. So there goes a pupil in there. And then kind of like keeping in mind how the scene is going to be lit. If the person is lit from directly in front of them and there's a lot of light, then this pupil is going to be smaller, right? That's just because uh, the pupil, it, it contracts and expands to allow, contracts and dilates, I guess is the word they use. It dilates to allow, to pick up a little more light when it's darker and it contracts to protect itself from having too much light when it's bright. So if it's in a really bright, bright lit setting and there's a lot of light in front, you'd make that pupil smaller. Um, but if they're on something, and uh, then, then the pupil's gonna be a little bit dilated. So it really just depends on what's going on with this character to determine the size of that. Once again, that doesn't have to be exact because it is, um, you're gonna to go to the render layer after this, okay? So, and then at this point we really actually have, see what I'll do here is I'll add just, and I'll put this on the sketch one layer since it's above, I just like to have it kind of on the layer that's gonna be, I just like this idea of knowing where this fold is gonna be. That's my 12 minute timer so that we know that we kind of need to start to get to wrap this up. But we've actually got all the parts of the eye in there. And if you want to go, um, see, let's take our figure layer down a little bit so that we, cause we really don't need it anymore. We can just take that down to zero. So see, you've got there the sketch of the eye and I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, an eye is, is a, it's it's one of the most um, important parts for doing anything that's portraiture, digital portraiture, anything like that. Uh, but it's it's pretty easy, you know. Even though it seems more complicated than it than it is, it's pretty easy to get that those basic things in place. And um, and then if you wanted to, this is really not necessary because you can do all of this in the painting. But you know, you could actually go ahead and um, you know you could kind of make these these valleys that are in there the the iris has a very interesting um combination of of valleys that are that are underneath the surface that create these these interesting marks and things like that and then it's kind of shadowy and shaded around the edges now now all of this you're going to redo in the you're actually going to do it in the digital painting phase which i'm going to make a video for that uh for release uh tomorrow um but yeah, if you want to just kind of get the idea of it, you could, you know, you could put some of that in there, right? And not that none of that's really going to hurt uh, to put in on the sketch layer, because everything that you do on the sketch layer is basically kind of your discretion, because it's there to inform uh, the, the the painting um, phase. So now you've got your sketch phase in there, or whatever. Um, this is totally not necessary for the sketch level, but. You know, if you wanted to put that in there and, uh, you know, put some kind of a highlight in there, you know, whatever. So you just kind of get the idea that, that uh, you know, there, there's some light going on and there's some reflection. So there you have it. You've got your eye is sketched and I'm going to use save this, this actual file and we're going to use this um, in tomorrow's video when I go in and digitally paint this, which um, is certainly more challenging for me, um, you know, as, as a newbie to concept art. But, um, you know, whenever we start with a pretty good sketch, um, it definitely makes the next stage um, much, much easier. Um, actually, before we go, I'm gonna do, to do one little trick um, just to, to kind of show you that you can actually do if you are planning to um, it's just a quick little trick and it, you can only do it because you're using Photoshop. It's the symmetry tool. So if you don't already know about this, so you see you've got the symmetry tool 
and you've got vertical, horizontal, whatever. But for eyes, if you're doing a face that you know is going to be perfect, perfectly symmetrical and you want it to be, um, you know, you want it to kind of match up, then what you can do is you can go ahead and bring in one of these uh, vertical symmetry tool and everything that you draw on, on one side of that tool is going to copy itself uh, on the other on the other part right so I'm gonna just really quickly I'm gonna do an eye again and just following the steps that we just talked about but I'm actually gonna do it uh, a little bit faster probably with less of the guides so just here we go so I'm gonna try to do it a little bit faster here we go All right. so let me turn up that layer so you see that my, my figure is, is doing everything symmetrically so like I said, you kind of make that circle. It does not have to be perfect, right? Because I don't know anybody's eyes that are perfect. Uh, there's certainly people's eyes who are close to perfect, but. So there, yeah, I'm already overworking that. And then uh, on that figure layer, I'm going to do my, I'm going to do my slanted line because I do like this, the, the eyes that kind of slope inward a bit. Um, and there I'm set up with my figure layer. So then I'm going to go to my sketch layer and that is where I'm going to zoom in. Can't, can't do that on paper. Um, so there we go. I'm not hating on paper. I'm, I'm a fan of it. I, I did used to originally start to learn art on paper. Um, and so I, it makes the fact that I actually did a few lessons once before on paper and everything does make me appreciate very much more the benefits of doing art on, on digital. Cause I, I remember things that, you know, that I was, was not being able to be taught or, you know, I remember things that I was taught or things that I could or could not do because of the limitations of paper that are amazingly easy to do in digital and actually help help me learn faster in digital honestly because these layers i mean the fact that you can draw this um on these layers once again i mean this stuff doesn't have to be like exact right i mean that's the beauty is like you can figure forgive yourself i mean and the thing about it is with me being a beginner i already know that my art is not necessarily going to be on the cover of conceptart.org or anything like that right now so i mean just just be forgiving of yourself right and just just sketch yeah, everything's digital so you can erase it you can destroy it you can do it again you're not like tied to anything you do so it can be fun i just think it can be a lot more fun now um so i can actually make my brush a little bit smaller by using those brackets left and right brackets so because the, this eye is more zoomed in than the other one is, then, you know, in order to get in here and get my little ledge set up, then, you know, I can do that, right? But then look what's happening on the other side of the page at the same time. So as I'm doing that, as you can see, it's copying to the other side. And it's doing it symmetrically, right? So if I was trying to draw a face that's just looking dead at the camera, um, then I could do that. And, you know, so so you could you kind of use this guide to help you decide where that bottom line goes because the reason it bulges out a little bit is because the eyeball's back there. So that is kind of what's creating that crease. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be that big. I mean, depending on who it is, if it's a... Depending on the character is going to be the other kind of way you close that a bit. You kind of wrinkly and just kind of get your, you know, like that. Let's just add a few wrinkles for the wheels in there. All right, add these wrinkles like I mentioned that go into there. And you see it's all happening on, the, on both sides. And so for example, let's go back to this eye layer. So I'm going to do my iris. So actually let's go to figure layer and just give my rough there's my what put the thing but that's about halfway right in the middle that would be there so I know it's 
the iris is two quarters of that. Two quarter, one half, I guess. Two quarters of the same as one half. So now I've got those guidelines in. Um, let's take those down a little bit because they're a little too visible for me. And let's go in and sketch a, sketch a circle. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before where it kind of goes towards the bottom but doesn't really. Right, so there it is. And once again, we don't have to be perfect. We can forgive ourselves, we're having fun. You know, we can erase everything and it won't change the world. So, bam. So there's our iris and then our pupil. We can just kind of circle, start circling in there and build that up. I'll make it a tiny bit of a smaller pupil this time. All right. All right. If I want to, I can just kind of shade in the iris. I mean, that's just me having fun. I don't, you don't really have to do that. That's just, just me going in and there, there and do. Because I'm going to go over all of this, you know, in the in the drawing phase, in the painting phase, anyway. Right. This is this is a sketch, and sketches are supposed to be fast. And the most important part of the sketch is, do I like the form? Right. So if I like how those eyes look, you know. Um, then, then, then that's fine, and I can go in, and I can, you know, I can change anything I want to. And the beauty of that uh, of that mirror tool is that it's gonna do the exact same thing on both sides. And then, if for whatever reason um, I want to stop mirroring, then I can just say symmetry off, right? So symmetry is now off. And then, for example, I go in there. And I and I stick the highlights in, but they're going to be on the on the same side of the eyes, uh, as the opposite side of the eyes, you know, as each other because the light's coming at both of them from the side. So now the symmetry is off, and it makes more sense to do things that are going to be individual to one side or the other. So anyway, so that's my video on sketching eyes. I hope that this was helpful for you. I just learned this uh, pretty much right now. So, um, and I'm just sharing it out to you right away. So, you know, if, if something I told you wasn't perfect, that's probably why, but I would definitely love to get your feedback in the comments if this was helpful. Uh, be sure and and do subscribe if you, if you do think this is a, something that's helpful for you because I'll be doing a lot more of these types of videos and I do post them daily. So I'm really thank thankful that you uh, joined me here today and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow with a new video.